I got into journalism because I was interested in China, and I was interested in China because I was a product of the Vietnam War generation in the late 60s and early 70s, uh, and as I tried to make sense of the war, the more I read, the more I studied, the more it sort of came back to China. And I was very lucky after uh, my senior year in college to get on a trip to China in 1973, very, very early on in the days of U.S.-China uh, opening up. And as I thought about back then, how could one actually go to China, keep track of things in China, journalism was one of the few vehicles that seemed to offer a possibility uh, of eventually being based in China or covering China. I came to Hong Kong in late 1975. Hong Kong was as close as one could get at that stage to being in China. Many, many people whose lives had been uh, focused on covering Vietnam, even though they were based in Hong Kong, were in the process of leaving, and that in this tumultuous year of 1976, the China story became huge. American journalists were shut out, and so somebody who could sit in Hong Kong and sift through the clues in the Chinese press and pull together something uh, that might make sense, um, that, that, was a, that was an asset that, that was attractive. My first job here was as a radio stringer for CBS News in the very building where we are shooting this interview now, down one floor. And after three years at CBS, I joined NBC. And then uh, I got very frustrated with the nature of network news, with the fact that it was difficult for stories from this part of the world to get on the air. Uh, when I joined CNN, CNN had uh, four course foreign correspondents. I was the fifth uh, for the whole world. So I spent my first nearly five years uh, theoretically living in London, but in fact going all over the world. I did a hundred pieces in my first three months for CNN where they sent me to Beirut in the spring of 1983. It's more than I did in my entire eight years in Hong Kong. We would be on the air when no one else was on, or you know, we could do things with this 24-hour format. You could cover things differently. You, 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 you didn't have to be as superficial. You could get into a lot more detail. And of course, you got a lot better doing it every day, all the time. So it was a very exciting period to kind of challenge all the conventional wisdom about how TV was done. And you really felt like you were on the cusp of a revolution. And of course, looking back, uh, I think those of us in the early years at CNN were. CNN had always sort of indicated that if and when they got around to opening a bureau in Beijing, um, I would be the one to go. And they finally got it together in the latter half of 1987. It was not a wealthy network, and so they put me and my family in the Urtan Bingwan, which is, was then an absolute dump. Uh, they were too cheap to put us in the one or two decent Western joint venture hotels while we waited for a flat. And we went there with a four-month-old and a Labrador retriever. We did a lot of stories initially that were sort of just slice of life stories, things like the first exhibition of Western makeup in China, which caused a near riot among the young Chinese women waiting in line to get in. I was glad that I got there when I did because I had about a year of getting to know the place and doing those kinds of pieces uh, before things began to get very tense. And that, of course, all led uh, to Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square was one of was an accident of history in terms of the coverage. Uh, what people forget is that the big event that spring was going to be the visit to Beijing by the Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev to put an official end to the 30 years Sino-Soviet dispute. Because the Chinese thought this was a big deal, they relaxed the restrictions that were normally in place. And then having this horrible end, uh, pictures are being pumped out from Tiananmen day after day of hundreds of thousands of student protesters uh, making extraordinary demands. Uh, and it was kind of peeling back layer after layer of the officially imposed version of Chinese society and seeing the reality underneath. 
uh, and suddenly seeing it in real time on television all over the world. There are certainly people who have sort of big story itis. But I never felt that way. I mean, big story was great, but an, inter an interesting offbeat story that no one had heard about that would let me go to a, a, a cool, weird, out of the way place, find something interesting to tell people about, was just as satisfying. So I ended up staying six more years after Tiananmen. I took a year off to write a book, which was about my experience. It's called China Live, People, Power, and the Television Revolution. Still in print, a decade later, I'm pleased to say. And then I came here in 96 to open up CNN's Hong Kong Bureau. The other big story, I think, was in 1994 when I was the only American journalist to visit North Korea with former President Jimmy Carter at a time when the U.S. and North Korea were dangerously close to a war. Carter's trip and the way he used CNN to send signals back to Washington was instrumental, in my view, in preventing a Korean War. And while that wasn't my goal, my goal was to tell a dramatic story. I'm very proud of the fact that we played, I think, a very positive role in preventing a very, very scary situation from getting out of hand. North Korea, I think, is just such a complicated, difficult place. And I was very lucky during my time at CNN to make 14 trips there. And that was the that was really the, the, the impetus for my, for my leaving was uh, largely because I wanted to do a book. Given the complexity of the story, you almost need a format like that because it's just too hard to make sense of a place like North Korea in a minute and 30 seconds or 400, 500 words. Anyway, I'd done 24 years and it's a lot of wear and tear on self and family and so on. So it was a good switch and working on a book is absolutely fascinating because you realize that as interesting and exciting as TV news is, uh, it is profoundly superficial. Uh, when I left CNN in 2006, it's pretty much where it remains. It has a big production center, which I think suggests a pretty significant commitment to the region still. The values of the craft remain the same, whatever the changing technology, and I think if you keep that on board, then you can make use of the technology without losing the substance.